Today I want to talk about one of my favorite things. I watch TV a lot, and, you know, I scroll through Netflix, you know, in this time people just scrolling through Netflix more and more every day. And the one thing that you see more than anything that I'm seeing, it come pop, keeps popping up in the movies and on Netflix and on Hulu, they always have these shows about heroes. I mean, they're popping up always new here. I can't even keep up with how many heroes there are these days. And they're heroes left and right, right? I mean, I love stories about heroes. I love the hero stories. Uh, heroes always, you know, have these powers. They have these things that make them different and unique, make them special. And one of my one of my favorite hero powers is like telekinetic, right? So it's basically moving moving things with your mind. So what you're doing is they you see them and they put their two fingers here and they look at something and they lift up and it moves. And then you got the the ones that will shoot fire from their hands or something like that. Anybody ever seen Wanda Wanda Vision? Mm -hmm. right, Y'all know that, all right? So you know how Wanda would just think a thing and it happened? Amazing, right? You know, if you haven't seen that, I take you back. I take you back to the Star Wars, right? Remember Luke? He's lifting up things and he moves his hand that way and it goes right or left. And he lifts up something, he moves it that way and it goes that way. You know, and they call it the force, right? Right. And the thing that 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 always bugs me about sometimes is that. They always seem to be tired after they did that, right? Like Luke would always get drained, even if you looked at the Mandalorian, the little, the little Yoda thing, right? Every time he did something, he got immediately tired and drained out, right? Like, as a matter of fact, one of the telltale signs of, of someone using their telekinetic powers is like their nose will be drained, or they'll, or they'll get very lethargic and, and fatigued. And I was maybe one, I said, well, maybe, maybe that power Maybe that power ain't theirs, it's just something they tap it into. They're just tapping into something. It ain't really theirs because they get drained by using it. It's something they tap it into. You know, and I think about Superman, right? Superman can do all types of things, right? There's nothing this dude can't do, right? He can fly, he has super strength, he can uh, uh, shoot fire or x-ray beams out of his eyes, right? He can hear through walls. He can see who are. But it always made me feel a little less satisfied with him because he had a weakness. Uh -huh. His weakness was this little green rock. I'm like, dude, really? Like you can do all this stuff. You can even you can even control time. Y'all remember that? Remember when Lois Lane died? Uh -huh. yeah. and and he went up and around the earth and went the other direction and brought her back to life. He could even do that, but this one little rock, this little green rock, he couldn't get past that. It was a boundary for him, right? He couldn't get past it. It's amazing, right? Something so powerful, so someone so powerful, they can't get past this little thing. Had a weakness. So that's the thing with, 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 with heroes, right? They they have this these great abilities and these great powers, but they always have this one little thing that just can't get past. It. Do we have some heroes in the Bible? What are some of them? We got what? We got David. Yeah. David was what? He, he's most known for slaying the slaying the Goliath, right? Yeah. Took that yeah. bat, right? Yeah. Hit Goliath, knocked him out. He was done. He was a great person with with battle, right? He won the wars and he made Israel great mm -hmm. in the sight of all the nations, right? And you got Moses. Moses was a hero. He brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. Did some great things, right? One thing I hear later Ann talk about all the time is how he had to hold his hands up when he battled with, uh, against the Amalekites. And when his hands were up, they were winning. Them hands fell down, they started losing. They had to keep them hands up. He gets so tired. He had to have people come and hold his hands up, boom, yes, just so they could win the battle. Yes. But him keeping his hands up, he was a hero. Again, when the Egypt, when the Egyptians were coming out of, uh, when the, uh, the Israelites were coming out of, he was bringing them out. They came 
against the the the, the Red Sea. And everybody was coming against him, and everybody's wondering what's going to happen. All right. He turns his, and holds up the stand. Yeah. And I want to start the point. Yeah. Yeah. And able to escape. What a hero. What a man that, that can part the sea. Think about Solomon. Man. Now you talk about. That's something better than telling the things to be the wisdom. Yeah. He was able to teach. Yeah. All right. The people that would have fought him didn't want to fight him because they would rather come and sit and learn from him. Ain't that something? Yeah. The people that would have been <laughs> ready to kill you and take everything you had mm -hmm. said, no, nah, instead of that, I'm going to go sit and learn from this dude. Mm -hmm. I gained more from sitting and learning from him than I do from going to fight him. All right. He didn't have to fight about mm -hmm. He lived in a time of peace. Yeah. One thing he knew he could do was say, let me just build the temple. Let me build the temple to God. Uh -huh. I ain't got nobody to fight. But there's something about heroes. It's one thing that makes them heroes, right? And the thing that makes them heroes, you can go to the, to the next slide. The thing that makes heroes heroes are villains. Because a hero can't be a hero without a villain. Why would else would we call them a hero? They had nothing that was against them. So we can go to the next slide. So the things about villains, right? What do they do? Why do we have villains? They call they they intimidate you, right? Yeah, think about think about David. When he fought Goliath, what did the first thing Goliath tried to do? He intimidated him. He said, you know, how, how dare you send this little puny that guy up here to fight me? I'm a giant. I done slew a lot of people in y'all camp. All right. All right. And I'll do the same thing to you. Intimidation before a fight even starts. Yeah. Before the decision is in, ever even made, he wanted to intimidate. Yeah. He wanted to put fear in before anything ever started. Think about Moses. What did Pharaoh do when he first came? Like, who are you? <laughs> Dude, you can't even talk right. You st stuttering. You got somebody sitting here with you trying to talk for you. Be intimidated. My army is great. I'm great. I'm even a god myself. Who is your God? Intimidation. Intimidation. That's what a villain does. He wants you to not believe in you. Mm. He wants to stop the battle before it even starts. Because mm -hmm. right. if he can get your mind thinking you can't win, <laughs> guess what? You can't win. Fear. Put it in acronym form, right? Because we all know what that means, right? What's the acronym for fear? False evidence appearing real, right? They want to strike fear. They want to make you scared. Because with fear, again, the battle's already won. You're too afraid to move. You're paralyzed. You won't take action. And then what we had last year was what I call, and well, and what I put here is that first Peter 5 through 8, right? As be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Ain't that scary? <laughs> Won't that put some fear in you? Yeah. To think about your enemy looking around for you, waiting to gobble you up, waiting to devour you. Mm -hmm. That's scary. That's exactly what your enemy, what a villain wants. And then we got these sensible principles, right? That's what I call them, sensible principles. Because a sensible principle is basically when the facts don't add up, right? If it don't make sense, then it ain't real and it ain't right. So let me give you an example of a, a sensible principle. For David, it was, you know, bigger versus smaller. So what's going to win? Big. Sensible principle, right? Smarter versus uneducated. Who's going to win? 
is mine, right? Sensible principle. It makes sense. What about facts versus belief versus faith versus hope? Sensible principle, right? Tell somebody you hope something's going to happen. They say, well, that don't. How you add that? The hope does that. How many? The hope don't add up. Tell somebody you believe in something. Believe. Hey, where, where is that at? I can't see belief. I, I don't understand. How does that add up? Sorry. Your belief don't apply. Sensible principles. Sensible principles. The doctor said your percentage of what you have, you won't make it. Sensible principle. Your finances, you don't make enough to pay your tithes. You don't make enough to give financially. Because if you do, you're going to be underwater. Sensible principle. It don't add up. All right. Um, sensible principle. You messed up too bad to fix that situation, to fix that relationship. There's so much that can teach you. Remember what you said? Remember what they said? Sensible principle said <laughs> that relationship will never mean. Sensible principle. So we have these sensible principles. We have that doubt. We have that fear. We have that intimidation factor from villains. That's what they're there to do. But it's one thing a villain does. Because in every hero story, there's a point where things get really bad. It gets to a point in every story, there's not one I haven't seen, where it almost seems like the villain is going to win. He's going to overtake the situation. Yeah. He got you down on the ground against the rope. He's kicking you. He's beating you. But it's in that moment that the hero has to dig deep. They always dig a little deep. They always have to see that whatever their power was, they have to dig deeper than that power. They have to rely on something other than the power they got from them because what they were doing isn't working. That's why they defeated them. All right. Because what they were already using their powers for wasn't big enough to handle the building. But they always have to dig a little deep to see how to get past the situation. So let's talk about that. So if we are in a situation where we're getting beat down, we're in that situation where the villain is tearing us apart. It's all a part of the hero's journey. Go to the next slide. So the hero's journey. So what I'm here to tell you and really talk about is who is your hero, right? So in all the situations, and I'm going to tell it to you from a standpoint, from a biblical standpoint, how God is your hero. God is the hero of the Old Testament. He's the hero of the New Testament. And then he's the hero of the New Testament. All right. See, in the Old Testament, God was the hero because when Moses was holding up that stand, it was under the authority of God. See, we would give the, the credit to Moses, right? People would talk about Moses there and say how great he was. And even the scribes and the Pharisees, they would say, well, you're, not, you're not better than Moses. Who are you? They're missing the point. Point is, God was the hero all along. God was there in cloud by day and fire by night, leading the people. Right? It was God who parted the sea. It was God who was fighting the battle at Moses' obedience to lifting up his hand. It was God who was the hero then. Let's move on to to uh, how he how he had uh, felt David. It wasn't 
David that was the hero. It was God who was the hero. It was God who was there. It was God who gave him that confidence. It was God who surrounded him with people who supported him. It was God in those stones. It was God that took down the life. God is the hero in every story. Let's look at the New Testament. Can we, well, can we go to the next slide? Talk about the God of the, of the Old Testament. So you, talk, you see here, in the beginning, God created. It was God from the very beginning in the Old Testament. Exodus 34 and 6. Then the Lord passed by in front of him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in love and kindness and truth. Doesn't that seem like a hero to you? There is no one like God. Indeed, there are there is no one besides you, nor is there any rock like our God. And I like this last one, right? Because it's really just saying, I'm the hero. I even I am the Lord, and there is no Savior besides me. God is the hero. Let's talk about the, the God of the New Testament. Next slide, please. So God of the New Testament. See, here is where God steps on the scene. All right. We've been learning about God and, and, and Jesus and the Holy Spirit being one. So this is God stepping on the scene. He stepped on the scene in the form of Jesus in the New Testament. All right? This is God. God is the human. Jesus said, I am. As we learned from Pastor, I am the Son. Saying, I am. I am. The way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to the Father except for me. For there is, say, well, 1 Timothy 7 and 5, there is no God and there is no one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Acts 4, 11, and 12. This Jesus is stone that rejected by you, the village, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, yeah. for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. He is the hero. Let's talk about the God. Go to that. See, the God of your testament. Now we're, talking, now we're getting deep. Now we're talking about digging deep. Because now God exists in us in the Holy Spirit. God is still the hero. All right. You see, something about when we think about heroes, right? Sometimes we look at heroes and our perception is different. It's hard to tell who the hero is, right? Because if you look at being a hero from your perspective, a hero, you're the hero, right? You're the protagonist. And everything that's in your way is trying to get into what you accomplish in your building, right? If you have a sports team, and I'm pretty sure when Lamont thinks about the Eagles, he thinks of them as the hero, right? And the people they're playing against, they're the village, right? If you look at the members on the team, it's funny how perception works. The members on the team can look at other team members and say, I'm the hero. Right? On the own, on the own team, I'm the hero. Because I, I, I want that spot. I'm, I want to be the best. And even in your own life, you look and you say, hey, I'm the hero. I'm the protagonist of my life. Now, other people might think that. Because in their life, who guess who the hero is in their life? You see, in your life, there is a hero. There is a protagonist. And it's the Holy Spirit. It's God inside you. So John 14, 26 says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Wow. A Helper. Don't that sound like a hero? 
and that's what a hero do. The Holy Spirit what intercede, steps in on your scene. That's what a hero does, right? The Superman come in and save the day before it gets bad. It's always terror going on. And he comes to save the day. Buildings done crumbled, cars done got flipped over, utter destruction. But then he comes in and says that he intercedes. God is a hero. Romans 8:26. Like the Spirit helps us in our weakness. But we do not want know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself intercedes with us for us. Romans and deep in the words, right? John 14 and 15 through 17. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and He will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it never neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Be with you forever. The world can't receive him, but you got You got a hero inside. He dwells in you. You have a hero inside. He's always there. He is your hero. That's where your power comes from. See, you, you might think that you have the superpower. Right? You think that you might be able to intimidate things and move things and, and create things and build them down. But it's God who's the hero. The Bible says we can't do anything without him. Nothing. To him we're nothing but dust. He created us. Right? So the hero inside you is God. He's the hero. It's not us. Anybody remember the uh, the movie Lazarus? Right? Oh, oh. Y'all remember that movie? Bruce Leroy. Bruce Leroy, that's right. Bruce Leroy, come on, y'all. Y'all have seen that movie. That was a movie back in, the, I want to say the... 70s. No, it wasn't the 70s. It was 80s. It was 80s. It was 80s. <laughs> but it would have been the only, I think it's the only movie that I've ever seen that Motown made. Motown made the movie. And so it talks about a, and, and you, you know, the, the famous song in the, heat, uh, in, in the heat of the rhythm of the night, to the beat of the rhythm of the night by El Bar. Yeah, it's, yeah, I know some of them. But the thing about this is a guy named Bruce Leroy. Now, Bruce Leroy was a kung fu master. He could do all types of kicks, he could throw stars. He could do flips. He could work the nunchucks. He could even dodge arrows and then even catch arrows with a blindfold on. And y'all, that was at the beginning of the movie. That was the very first beginning of the movie. That's not something he learned throughout the whole movie. He knew that at the beginning of the movie. Because at the beginning of the movie, he was a master. The problem was. He didn't know him, was he? He didn't believe him. His master said, I have nothing left to teach you, dude. He's like, ah, he fell to the ground and he's at the, at the master's feet. No, teach me more, teach me more, teach me more. The master said, leave. He said, I, I have nothing to teach you. So to get him out of space, he gave him a, a challenge. He didn't mean anything. He just gave him a challenge to do. So Bruce Lee Roy was in search of what? What was he in search of? Anybody remember? The glow. Right? That's what meant you were a true man. He wanted something on the outside to appear. He wanted a glow. Because that to him meant I was the man. I was the man. So he went on this search. And he went looking for this glow. He went to this place looking for where his master told him to go for this glow. And it turned out to be just a machine. And he was so horrible because he was looking on the outside for something that he was going to get on the outside to make him go that was going to validate him as a true master. But it wasn't until he ran into this guy named Shonen, a Shogun of Hawk. Shogun. 
And sure enough, thought he was bad. I mean, if you saw the cockiness of this guy, you gotta check this movie out. This is funny enough. Isn't it? But he was a shogun on the hall. He had his little crew behind him. But see, the thing about shogun, he had confidence. He was intimidated. He brought fear wherever he went. He would let you know about these sensible principles. Right? Because I'm bad. I'm the biggest, baddest in this town. And I'll show it to you. We'll beat up on small people, we'll beat up on kids, we'll beat up on take on anybody. I want the challenge, but you can't beat me. So Bruce Lee was scared of him. He had fear. Now he would fight anybody else and beat him up. Tell him up. But this one guy, he let intimidate him, he let him bring fear. And he listened to the sensible principles of this guy. And it wasn't until Shona made him the AD. He beat him down. He was drowning. Had his head in a barrel. And it was then that he started to realize and think he had to be a I already am a master. I already have what it takes. I'm already equipped. It was what he saw inside that then made that brother glow. All right. Mm -hmm. It was what he saw on the inside and had on the inside that made him and gave him the power to defeat his enemy, to defeat his villain. So God has given us what we need in the same sense. He's given us what we're supposed to have. But our villains in our life will tell us, no, nah, you can't make it past this. Our villains in our life will tell us, no, nah, you can't, you can't achieve that goal. You won't do it. Our villains will tell us, this don't add up, we don't calculate, it does not come to you, right? But it's what you already have on the inside that can't be seen. But it's very real. It's like that telekinetic power, right? So you can't see what happens in between. You just know they thought it and it happened. That's what the Holy Spirit is like on the inside. It doesn't always make sense, though. So just like our hero, and who is our hero? Our hero is God. And what I'm about to say, don't get mad at me. Don't y'all throw start throwing tomatoes in there. Okay. But even there is a weakness in the hero. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Even there's a weakness in our hero. The weakness would be our doubt. The weakness would be. Our will. Because God won't move on our doubt. And he will not move against our will. So I say it as a weakness for the point of illustration. But it's more like a boundary. Right? There's a certain lines he won't cross. He put his own weakness in How do we become God's people? God is saying, I want to be your Savior. I want to go. I want to give you life. You keep choosing no. You keep choosing them. You keep walking towards the thing that I say you turn away from. All right, now go. You tell me no. I can't work my life out so that I can give all time, so that I can give. I won't die to this part of my life in order to live in this part. I won't do it. 
know God. That person hurt me too bad. I will never apologize. I will never go to them. I will never pray for them. And God is like, I want to save you. I want to be your hero. I want to tell you how to die to that thing so I can give you life. We are the villains yeah. in our own journey. Yeah. We're the yeah. ones who was telling God, I don't want you. I don't want to sit in your presence. You know why? Because your success looked like my success. The way that you see power and, and, and you being my hero ain't the way that I want to be a hero. I want to be the hero of my life. Because the biggest part of that is the way you want me to be the hero and the way you want to say it, and you want the way you want to be my hero, make me look stupid. Make me look weak, make me look dumb. Isn't that crazy? We're still trying to be cool. Yeah. Yeah. We still care about how we look. Yeah. Forgetting who it is the hero. If we forget who the hero is, we cut off what he can do. Yeah, yeah, amen. Yeah. We limit the hero and his ability to save us, mm-hmm. to deliver us, yeah. to build us up, yeah. to pour into us. Yeah. By us being the villain. All right. By us being his weakness. Yeah. I don't want to look bad. But the Bible says something crazy, right? And it basically says this. If you're willing to become a fool for me. Yeah. Oh, so Lord. If you look foolish for me, Lord Jesus, I can handle this situation. As long as you are the hero in your own life, uh-huh. I'll step back and let you take control. Yeah. Yes, you will. Because yes. Yes. I want to be bold. I want to be the hero. I want to look cool. I want to be the one who, who, who has the influence. I want to be the one who has the power over people. I want to be the one that runs the touchdown. I want to be the one that gets the company out of trouble. I want to be the one that is right in my marriage. I want to be the one that is right in all my relationships. So I don't want to do it your way because your way makes me look foolish. He says, exactly. Exactly. Because now I can step in. Yeah. And I can save you. I can save the relationship. I can save the job. I can save the marriage. I can save go, go. the relationship. Yeah. If you just be foolish, because the more we look like everybody else doing everything, the less he can step in. Yeah. Let him step in. Yeah. Let me step in is what he's saying, and that's what he's crying to. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Just please let her step in. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, you, you're down and you're out. You're getting beat up pretty bad. Mm-hmm. Oh. You're on your last leg. You're on the edge. You're almost making it through. Almost. Because you almost give it up. Yeah. You almost, almost. become a fool. Realize who your hero is. Be foolish enough yeah, yeah. to be a fool. Yeah, to let God come in Amen. and do something that'll blow your mind. All right. 
it will change your situation. Yeah. It will take you from glory to glory. See, we're giving God our, our weakness. But wouldn't it be so much better to give him our love? Oh, that's good. We go to the next slide. In the next one. Oh, well, let's say, let's say, let's go over this. So, heroes weakness, right? I, I left that there, the rejection in there. And Jesus said to them, only in his hometown, amongst his relatives, yeah. in his own household, is a prophet without honor. He could not perform any miracles there except lay his hand on the healed, the sick, and healed. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Because oh. believing made them look foolish. Believing made them look foolish because, you know, we know this guy. He, he, he can't do this stuff. He looks foolish. So because of that, they were their own villains. He could not. So I'm not making this up. I'm getting it from the word. If you have the doubt, if your will says no, you cut him off. He didn't cut you off. You cut them off. Let's look at the fig tree, right? Have faith in God, Jesus said to them. Truly, I tell you that if anyone says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, it has no doubt in his heart, but believes that it will happen, it will be done to him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask and for in prayer, believe that you have received. And it will be cool. He even looks foolish, don't you? You don't add up. The sensible principles don't add up when you believe. You can't calculate. You can't touch it. You can only believe it. You can only see it in your mind. But it doesn't add up. But if you believe, but if you become a foolish and you foolish person and you look like a fool, God will <clears throat> step in. So we can turn a hero's weakness to a hero's wealth. We go to the next slide. Say. A hero's wealth. What happens when you welcome God? The Bible says if you humble yourself before the Lord. If you humble yourself before the Lord, who can take a position and do something great? Kneeling down. What man can do that? That's what your enemy says to you when he sees you praying. When you're in the fight, when you're in the battle, and you're just about to give up. How can you take that position and beat me? Because you got somebody else who's stepping in. Because as you kneel, God is coming up and saying, I'm here now. I'm taking care of that. Because what you saw was foolish of them kneeling down. I'm coming to cover. I'm coming to take care of. Now you got to deal with my power. Now you got to deal with my strength. Because the the, the weakness that they were putting in front of me, the boundary they were putting in, they moved it out of my way. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you were broke now. Look at Deuteronomy 30 and, and 19. I declare unto you today that you will surely perish and you shall not prolong your days in the land that you cross, that you're crossing to Jordan to possess. I call heaven and earth this witness against you today that I have set before you life and death. That's the force of choice. You talk about your will being a weakness. It's a choice. That's what your will is. It's a choice. 
I said before you, life and death, blessings and curses, a choice. See, we're just vessels in this thing. But we get to decide what we let in and what we let out. There's nobody who makes a decision without some type of influence. And that influence comes from choices. Choices of life and death, choices of blessing and curse. He said before, it's life and death, blessing and curse. So when he's saying death, he's saying that's your that's the weakness you put in front of me. When you when it's the cursing that you choose, that's the weakness you put in front of me. But when there's life and when there's blessings, I'm all in. When you let that be what's poured into you, I'm all in. Therefore, choose life. It gives you the answer, right? Choose life. He's telling you the story. He's giving you the story. You know what? The movie, we don't really know what's going to happen. We don't really know how it's going to end. But our hero has told us the end of the story. He told us how, he told us how it ends. He told us how it's going to look bad before it gets better. Yeah. Yeah. He told us it's going to be terrible. But he also told us, right when things look like it will not get any better, right when things look like it's about to crumble on your head and there's no chance for you. All right, all right. Step on the scene. Choose life. Choose life. So that you, your descendants, may live. And that you may love the Lord your God, obey him. And hold fast to him, for he is your life, and he will prolong your life in the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers, Abraham and Isaac. Give you some promises. So I guarantee you we're going to win in the end if you choose life. If you give God the hero's work. Can we go to the next slide now? I chose this one because it kind of sums it up. And the real verse that I want to focus on out of Ecclesiastes 12, 18 through 14 is number 13. And it says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Yep. Okay. All right, all right. Fear God. Amen. Keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Fear God. It's foolish. Fear something. But when you have fear of the right thing, you have fear of the right one. He steps in and your strength. It says the, the making of books, the making of stories, the making of movies, the making of these principles that we deal with day in and day out. There is no end. We want to do a whole bunch of stuff in our life. There'll be a whole lot of things to continue with. There'll be a whole lot of you believe in God. It's a whole lot of you believe giving helps. You believe in that turning the other cheek really works. Could you? So stupid. That way will never work. You see how I get mine. But what you have, I guarantee you. I can guarantee you it won't last. I guarantee you it won't cross over. All right. I guarantee it. But what I'm building yeah. has no need. No need. No need. So yeah, keep your pride. Keep your broken relationship. Keep your money. Keep your things. Keep your status. Your stuff. Your stuff. Keep your view of being on top. Guarantee 
Wow. 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 Jesus. Now, I ended up this way. I, I always like to um, like some things that we used to do back in the day. We used to have this thing called responsive reading. I thought you were going to sing. No, I'm not going to sing. <laughs> I'll spare. <laughs> it is there. But so if we can, everybody turn to Colossians 3. 15 and 7. Uh, King James Version, please. It reads it read so that it, it comes out right. That's again, Colossians right here. 3 15. All right, y'all ready? All right, let's read. And let the peace of God rule in our hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in songs and hymns. Spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and to the Father. Amen. And all you do, teaching to demonstrate one another in songs, right? God will change those and deal with those fears and doubts. He'll deal with those sensible principles that bind down. But let's make sure above all, we give God his due his credit. He is a hero. He was a hero in the past. In the Old Testament, he was a hero in the New Testament, and he is a hero today in your life. Amen. But let's make sure we give God a hero. Amen. 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 Amen.